Okay, so as always, just as a disclaimer, this video might contain spoilers and may not be appropriate for everyone because some details may be too disturbing or too gruesome or horrifying for some. So viewer discretion is always advised. All right. Welcome back to Fantastic Fridays and Horror Month. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I've been really enjoying making them and having really cool conversations with people about some of the things I love in horror. And yeah, I hope to see you all throughout the month of October and onwards. So let's get into it. Hammer Horror, known for their horror-focused films, gruesome low-budget effects, and revealing... Um, visuals. Founded in 1934, Hammer Horror was a British production company focused initially on comedy, capers, and crime thrillers, but gained great cinematic strides beginning in the late 1950s, essentially remaking classic universal horror films that had great success in the United States like Dracula and Frankenstein. They invaded the box office for decades with deviant films and thrived through to the late 1970s. Today, Hammer is making subtle comebacks with notable pictures including an adaptation of the marvelous 2008 Swedish film Let the Right One In in 2010 entitled Let Me In, and the ghost horror story The Woman in Black in 2012 starring Harry Potter himself, an adaptation of Susan Hill's 1983 novel of the same name. So maybe there's some hope for a Hammer Horror revival, but in this video we will be discussing some of my favorite Hammer Horror films, and you're in for a bloody good time. These are all going to be for all the months of October's videos, and possibly in future videos, so buckle up. The years start coming and they don't stop coming and what are we to do about aging? Have you ever thought that bathing in the blood of virgins might be the answer? Well, perhaps if you're a countess obsessed with the idea of maintaining a youthful appearance, it may have crossed your mind more than once. Starting off with Countess Dracula in 1971, Peter Sadsey. In this Hammer Horror production, the incredible Ingrid Pitt portrays the infamous Countess Elizabeth Bathory in this bloody, debaucherous, gothic tale. Without a doubt, Ingrid Pitt is one of my favorite Hammer Horror girls and gives a stimulating performance of seduction, insecurity, and paranoia. The visuals are always a treat with an added bonus of period piece wardrobe. Please don't ask me if it's not particularly accurate to the period. I just really think it looks spectacular and I'm sure they used heavy artistic license to appeal to the 1970s fashion at the time, but it still looks good to me. So as an average viewer, I can't tell the difference. Not to mention the amount of blood in this movie is enough to satisfy the most anemic. So if you're looking for a twist on the vampiric standard, Countess Dracula is a bloodbath of fun. Moving on to Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell, 1974, this is Terrence Fisher. A nip here, a tuck there, and voila, you can look like a completely different person. Or people. We have another gem from Hammer Horror directing alum Terrence Fisher featuring Hammer Horror superstar Peter Cushing reprising his role once again as the twisted Baron Victor Frankenstein. In this film, the Baron is at it again, using the alias Dr. Carl Victor to, to continue his gruesome plights as a blackmailing asylum doctor who seeks to create a new creature from the acquired limbs of unfortunate patients. Using the help from newly admitted patient accused of sorcery and body snatching, wow, those are some harsh crimes to be accused of, Simon Helder, played by the actor Shane Bryant. Cushing delivers the right amount of grotesque action and charmingly evil temperament in the role and teases us with the possibility of another chapter at the end. However, this was the final film in the Frankenstein film saga and was Fisher's last film as well. Fun fact, Peter Cushing had a hand at designing the wig in this film as he did like the attention to detail with his characters in all of his roles. However, Cushing later regretted this, saying that the appearance came off too much of American stage and screen actress Helen Hayes. What's wrong with that, Peter? Even though Cushing was nearly 60 during the filming, he insisted upon doing his own stunts, always dedicating himself to his craft and character. Speaking of dedication to the craft, actor David Prose, who plays the monster in this film, as well in the horror Frankenstein, and is the only Hammer Horror actor to reprise the role in two separate films, previously had to sit through hours of makeup for the monster, but luckily in this film he only had to endure about 30 minutes of makeup chair time. Their seemingly serendipitous pairing on screen would further continue in a little space movie in 1977 called Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope as Darth Vader and Grand Moff Tarkin. Talk about a great body of work. Nonetheless, this film is the perfect dose of camp and prosthetics and is just what the doctor ordered. Who's my mummy? 
you're not going to want the answer to that. Blood from the Mummy's Tomb, 1971. Seth Holt and Michael Carreras who is unaccredited in this film. I'll tell you why. This Hammer Horror production stars Valerie Leon as Margaret. I, I mean, Queen Tara. Uh, well, Margaret also. Who is the daughter of Professor Fuchs, played by Andrew Keir, a man who, while leading an expedition, uncovers the tomb of an ancient and magical Egy Egyptian queen, Queen Terra, and brings her sarcophagus back to England, where the rules of reincarnation ruminate within Margaret. This film is loosely based on the 1903 Brown Stoker novel, The Jewel of Seven Stars, which is probably my favorite Stoker novel, actually. This film was a bit of a nightmare to produce following many difficulties in casting, filming, and falling outs, which could be because of the mummy's curse? Writer Chris Wickling was barred from the set due to a falling out with producer Howard Brandy and had to work evenings with director Self Holt, which resulted in production beginning earlier than anticipated. Additionally, the role of Professor Fuchs was originally supposed to be played by Peter Cushing, but due to his then-wife's health concerns was replaced by Andrew Keir. Oh, the fates. They continued to involve themselves as director Seth Holt died on set one week before shooting was to end, causing director, producer, and son of Hammer Horror founder James Carreras, Michael Carreras, to finish this shoot. Wow, this all just seems way too much to just be unfortunate coincidence. Is that why most mummy films have been under wraps recently? But really, this film is just as chaotic as its production and features some great performances and highly stylistic costuming and design. It's not as gruesome compared to other Hammer Horror films, but it's still very entertaining. As I'm sure it was as a relief to the people involved in this film, I'll say for all, that's a wrap on The Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. There's an old saying that goes, treat others the way you'd want to be treated. And well, if you want to be treated in a sadistic, vindictive, cursed, kind of way, then I guess go for it. Vampire Circus 1972, Robert Young. Vampire Circus focuses upon a curse and vendetta against the Serbian villagers who killed the vampire Count Mitarhas and destroyed his castle. When a traveling circus stumbles into the village, havoc is wrought on the children of Mitarhas' oppressors. As is not entirely uncommon with Hammer Horror Flips, this production was a bit messy and chaotic. Starting off with first-time director Robert Young, who struggled to meet deadlines and wasted film stock by mistakenly bribing a beef-obsessed tiger with pork. I mean, come on, we've all done that before. The production went over the six-week protocol to seven and then was shut down and footage was given to editor Peter Musgrave to manage whatever he could out of it. With complications, this film is imperfect but is a great effort. The plot is, for the most part, engaging and well-written and the performances are convincing. Adrian Corey, who plays Anna in The Mystic Woman, previously starred in Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of A Clockwork Orange portraying the wife of the writer who was savagely assaulted, and gives her character a wonderfully sinister and mysterious edge. Robert Taman also gives a sadistic and erotic performance as the short-lived Count Mitterhaus, and Anthony Higgins seduces the girls and the audience in his role as Emil. The film features ornate set designs, eroticism, campy horror effects, and distortions, all signatures of a great Hammer film. The sequel Sequences involving the mirror hall are quite impressive for the time and serve as a visual metaphor for duplicity. Overall, the film brings a horrifyingly whimsical tale back to life and resonates with that sage advice on making a change. Start with the man in the mirror. That one was kind of really bad. That was a stretch on that one. I don't know. He's good with his sword, if you know what I mean. And it's not just vampires he lays to rest. Oh, God. Our last one is Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter, 1974. This was Brian Clemens. Brian Clemens brings us the fantastic vampire hunting duo Captain Kronos and Professor Aronimus Grost. Really great reference here. Called in to help by his army brother, Dr. Marcus, when villagers begin to die under mysterious circumstances hallmarked by accelerated aging. Don't we all just hate that accelerated aging? Talk about premature graying. The film also stars Hammer and Bond girl Carolyn Munro, one of my all-time favorites, as is known in, <laughs> in the other ones that I've mentioned, and brings back the age-old superstition that vampires are terrified of religion <laughs> and their artifacts. It also introduces the concept of the different types of vampires, you-sucking and blood-sucking alike. Although actor Horst Johnson plays Kronos, it is Julian Holloway who voices the protagonist. 
While I usually side with the vampires in most cases, I can't deny that the suave and dashing Captain Cronus is really persuasive and captivating, and this film is an exciting action horror rather than a gothic horror. While it does include gothic elements such as setting and design, it ultimately approaches the supernatural in a swashbuckling way compared to what was standard of Hammer Horror at the time. Captain Cronus is a reminder that good triumphs all and that you shouldn't dance on the Sabbath, lest you find yourself in the stocks. Anyway, I'm always up for a good sword fight. Wait, uh, that came out wrong. So that wraps up this video. Next time you're looking for a good horror film that really brings the hammer down, check out Hammer Horror Films for a good fright. And if you're thinking about going into that tomb, don't. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you out of the coffin and on my channel in the next video. Bye. All right, so this was a shit show to make. I uh, am in hammer horror fashion here. This video has a lot of production difficulties and technical difficulties surrounding it. So uh, I'm going to blame that on the mummy's curse.